Welcome back into another episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica Cootie and so extremely excited for today's guest. We've had multiple requests. I personally could not wait to get a chance to sit down and chat with Dr. Susan Elza, one of the newest members of Matt Roll's staff, the chief of staff coming from Texas. Well, how are you settling in? Welcome to Lincoln. I mean, I'm trying to settle in. It's like I told you just a second ago. It's, you're not drinking out of a fire hose. You're drinking out of hydrant, straight <laughs> out of the hydrant. But uh, it's awesome. I love it here. So glad I'm here. Well, I guess let's start with the, the call, Coach Rule, and, and why you decided that this is the next step for you. Well, you know, the biggest honor that I had was getting to be the athletic director for high school sports in the state of Texas. But, um, you know, I, I've been a Coach Rule fan back when he was at Baylor, stopped through at their practices. Um, obviously, I knew some of the coaches on the staff. And um, when he went to Carolina, it's funny, him and I did talk about, you know, maybe I would come there. The timing wasn't really right. Um, and when I started seeing his name flash up there, you know, maybe to come to Nebraska, I was like, man, I wonder. And we connected and he was like, hey, come join us. And there just was not any way that I was gonna say no to this opportunity. Wow, so take me back to when you first met him then. When yeah. he was at Baylor and you were working with Texas high schools, what was the overall impression that, that you had from him? So I grew up in Waco. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I always went through, you know, even under the previous staff at Baylor and would stop through at practices and say hello, because I knew those, some of those coaches came from the high school ranks. So when Coach Rule got there, he hired, you know, guys from the high school ranks. And one of them was Joey McGuire. And um, him and I, you know, I say I, I've known him since I was knee high to a grasshopper, but we grew up in the profession together. And we saw each other's careers excel. You know, he was football coach at Cedar Hill. And so going through there, um, you know, y'all may not know Coach Rule very well, but if you're family with somebody on his staff, then you're family with him. And you just felt so, you know, welcome. And, you know, a lot of the guys that were on that staff then, I, don't, I didn't know them as well as I do now, obviously. Um, Sean Padden being one that uh, was, is so key and our staff here and was at the Baylor, you know, on the Baylor staff as well. And um, you, you just, you be around, you're, if you're around him for any amount of time and you see him interact with his coaches and his players, um, those times there made me want to work for him. I mean, you just, you pick your people by the way they lead. And you don't always get to pick your bosses that way, but I'm lucky that I had that time and I, and I knew if he did call my name, you know, I was gonna go running. We've heard a lot of stories about how when he was hired at Baylor and he went and won over all of the Texas high school football oh, yeah. coaches and how important that was. So what was your perspective of that and how he got in there? And it's such a huge recruiting hotbed and, and state of Texas high school football, how he won all those guys over. You know, when he came in, everybody's like, you know, pushing the Google button. You know, who's this guy <laughs> from Temple? I mean, everybody. I, I don't, you know, myself included in that. And he came in and, and, you know, I think he did a great thing because he did hire three Texas high school football coaches right off the bat, uh, Sean Bell, Wetzel, um, and, and of course, Joey. Everybody loves Joey. Um, and then, of course, he surrounded himself with the great people that he always does. And, you know, it, he made an effort. I think once he got to understand what Texas High School Coaches Association was all about, um, he made every effort to connect to that organization, to connect to every coach, especially when he's recruiting, just like what he's doing right now. What you see is what you get with him. And, you know, anybody that embraces that culture and respects those coaches, you know, they have straight line recruiting out of Texas, which means the high school, the college coaches, they commit to going to the head coach, you know, not going through somebody else, you know, those third party people that they're going to always talk to the head coach. And, you know, even uh, you know, when he was there, he embraced that immediately. Um, when he's here at Nebraska, he's doing the absolute same thing. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to oversell it, but if you're not re recruiting Texas, then you're not doing everything you can to win. And uh, there is a hotbed of talent, and I think Coach has done a great job and our staff of recommitting uh, to, to getting those recruits out of Texas. And, um, you know, I told him, you know, when I very first interviewed with him, I can help with that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and what I like about it is he doesn't stereotype, he doesn't paint you in a box, he just lets you do what you're good at. And, and, uh, and I hope, you know, as we continue to get players from Texas and in Nebraska and, you know, all the places that we need to get players that, that I can continue to, to play a role in that. 
And we were talking before we started recruiting. I mean, Texas has so many high schools, yeah. and there's so much talent, and even undiscovered talent. I mean, yeah. Bryce Turner is one of those oh, that, yeah. right when the staff got hired, that kid's fast, right? That okay. kid is fast. And um, you know, Coach Cooper came in and, and saw his film and the track. The track staff was recruiting him, oh, yeah. and they got him here as a, a dual sport athlete. But guys like that, and yep. I mean, how much of that is there in Texas? Oh, I mean, we were having a conversation this morning. And I shared this with you earlier, but. Um, there's just these hotbeds, you know, so you got your DFWs, you got your Houston area, you got your, your greater Austin area, San Antonio, um, but then you've got these pockets of talent um, that, that kids probably aren't getting the high profile look that some are, you know, the four and five stars. We all hear about them. There are a lot of four and five stars that just aren't in any ranking system. And I think it's those relationships with coaches and I think, you know, you know, Joe, uh, Garrett McGuire, you know, uh, Bob Wager, Josh Martin that are on the staff now and, and, and me, you know, we know where they are mm -hmm. and it's just getting to those coaches. And, and, you know, this, that was the one blessing that I had. I mean, I knew every coach in the state. I didn't know them by name, but at least they knew my name. And I, you know, I feel like that there's the talent is just not five and six. A. That's where people get all caught up. Um, it's, it's one through four, a one through six, a in our state. And, you know, y'all, you've heard coach enough. I mean, he, he's looking for a certain profile of athlete and it, it may not be their performance on the field because, you know, things are coachable, um, but he's looking for speed. He's looking for a certain body build um, and he's looking for, you know, high character. And uh, you put all that together and there's a lot of those in, in the state of Texas that, you know, maybe their names haven't even been mentioned yet. Obviously, I mean, I've been here a couple years now, but the things that I've been told is, you know, when Nebraska was at its best, there was that pipeline to Texas. Yep, yep. How important is is getting back to that? And I mean, and, and you want to help out with that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 coach had me do a couple of interviews in Texas right after, you know, the signing day. And um, that, that was the number one question, you know, is how did Nebraska move away from that Texas pipeline? And I don't have a clue how that happened. Um, but I, what I can tell you for sure is that we have a, a huge recommitment to it. Um, you know, our recruiting staff and scouting staff, that's headed up by Sean Padden, the one and only Sean Padden. He's incredible and a, and a bright mind for our football program and, and identifying talent and helping get them here among with all the other people on that staff. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad, you know, we, they have a plan. We have a plan, I should say, not they, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, that, to, you know, to identify, you know, the certain, you know, there's certain states that play at a higher level. And uh, I'm just so glad that, that the recommitment is there from Nebraska football. Um, I know the coaches in our state are very excited about it. And uh, I went and spoke at a deal in Houston um, just probably three weeks ago. And it was amazing how many of our high school coaches have played here or have some connection to Nebraska. And you just feel the vibe. I mean, you know, sometimes when people come from out of state, you don't have that same vibe. And it, there's a whole different vibe now um, that, you know, our staff has, you know, Texas folks on it. And um, like I said, the recommitment by, um, I, I guess it's a recommitment, the new commitment, whatever it is, it's a recommitment back to the 90s, you know, that we will have Texas players on this team. And I want to say this too, because I think it's important, you know, the, the commitment to make sure we also have Nebraska mm -hmm. players on this team. It's there, it's evident. I mean, we're finding the talent, you know, every single day. And, and um, I'm super excited about that too. Absolutely. I mean, that's been very evident by the staff that they want to protect the home, the home oh, court, yeah. right? Oh, and, for and sure. Also, but you know, your your connection to Texas too, obviously, is very important. But I think that's been very evident that yep. the staff has made very clear, and that's what they did at Texas, and what led yeah. to success at Baylor too. Oh, it was, was amazing. Was kind of protecting the home field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they 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 went and found those pockets of talent that I talked about. It may not be the kid that's talked about every Friday you know, on, on Dave Campbell's football, that's our big, big, you know, group that celebrates Texas high school football. And, uh, but they found them, they got them there. You know, I call it getting your mind right. They, I mean, they train us all. I mean, coach has a high standard for every single one of us. So I, I can see a transformation. I've only been here, you know, just under, I guess maybe right around six weeks. I was kind of back and forth, but I could see a transformation in that amount of time not only in our players, but in our staff and, and specific to me. I love to be challenged that way. It, it makes me better as a person. Uh, it makes our staff better overall. And uh, it's fun. This is fun to watch how, you know, how we're excelling. We got a long way to go. I'm not celebrating anything, you know. We're undefeated right now and we're enjoying that. But 
uh, there's a job to be done, and, and that job is to win football games. Well, let's talk about your background and how you got here in the first place. You played softball in yep. college and yep. then became a softball coach. Yeah. So how did you get into sports? Why softball and then why coaching, I guess? Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I played way back when. I'm an old lady now, but I played way back when at Southwest Texas, which is now Texas State. And um, I'm glad I had that experience. When I grew up in high school, there was no high school softball. You know, the, the, the organization wow. that I work for, UIL, you know, interscholastic sports, they did not have softball. But the year I graduated from college, they added softball. So I came straight out, was a head coach uh, in the Garland area, started a program there, then went over to Allen, which is the largest school in the state of Texas. And I coached 10 full years. And, I, and that has helped me. It really has helped me as a leader. Um, but I knew, like, from the very first – I taught, I wasn't like this high level teacher. I was health and PE, baby. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Cause I, I just, I, the health component is something I'm, I'm kind of a fitness nut. Um, and the physical education component, it just was in my wheelhouse. And, um, but I knew I wanted to lead and, and you, you know, you're trying to find your way. And um, I knew I wanted to be an athletic director. And so I, I got my mid management, which is equivalent to like a principal certification, never wanted to be that. and. And my, my career pretty much excelled. I met a guy named Todd Graham, um, which is, he's made a lot of stops, but he started in high school football in Texas and uh, he hired me there. I whispered my goals to him and he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure you meet your goals. And you fast forward, I was there at Allen for 12 years and then became an athletic director in schools. And um, you fast forward that thing. Um, I think I had 23 years under my belt when I got to you know, the call to be the athletic director of the state of Texas. And that was my goal. That was the ultimate goal. Um, never really thought about getting into college, and it was kind of a bucket list, you know. I, I hadn't dedicated my time to college, and I knew I'd be stereotyped. And you know how it is, those destiny things. You know, you, re, you run across somebody like Coach Rule, and, and you share, you know, I, I, this is something I, I would do if you ever had an opportunity for me. And here I am, you know, full circle. And, uh, and, I, and like I said, I feel very blessed to be here. You said the goal was to be the athletic director of the UIL. Why? Why was that the goal? Um, you know, I, I, I love um, leadership. And I, and I pride myself in learning and teaching. I'm, I'm a, I teach a, a college class for Texas A&M. I teach a best practices and coaching class. But I, I, I think that the way that we get to where we want to be is that we perform at our best as leaders and then we teach others how to lead. And... Um, I just wanted to be in a role where I could lead and help others. And that, that, that's what that job is. It's about supporting, you know, it has a lot of compliance to it. So you can get, you know, mm -hmm. you can get painted as a bad guy, but it's in that job, you get to celebrate, you, you know, kids number one and coaches number two and, um, and schools number three. And, and I loved it. I mean, I, it just, you, you have, you get in these positions of influence and, and if you lose, use it in the right way, it can be very effective. And I look back on it, I, I think we, I did, I was able to do a lot of good things for the state of Texas because of my beliefs in, in leadership and uh, in my beliefs and, you know, just how you have to serve to be successful and help others. You were the first woman ever to serve in that role. Yeah. What did that mean to you to, <laughs> to get to do that? I mean. Oh, wow. You know, when they very first interviewed me, I'll never forget, you know, that was the first question. I mean, every, every headline in the state of Texas was they hire their first female. And you're in this bittersweet place where you're like, you know, I'm, I'm proud. Mm -hmm. um, but you also don't want to be identified just because you're a female. I mean, you, you know, right. everybody, oh, yeah. everybody lives in that, that space. And, um, but you all of a sudden realize that you you're helping others mm -hmm. when you when you aspire and land in a role that that not very many you know females have assumed um, you're you're showing others that it can be done and I've had to I've had to get there because I just I didn't want to cast a, a negative light on you know oh yeah I'm I'm a female I got this you know you know stereotype you just want to stay away from that but then all of a sudden I realized. I got to give back and I've got a, any opportunity I can get to, to get in front of other females, aspiring females. And, you know, I, I think this goes outside of females. I think it goes into minorities and, and different things like that, you know, cause we all get stereotyped, you know, on the color of our skin, on our gender. I think, I think males get, you know, even stereotyped on things that are related to, to female sports. And I realized I needed to, to, you know, get in that gap and be a, be a good role model for others. And uh, you feel pressure. Um, but if you do your job, then there's no pressure, you know, and I always feel like I'm prepared and, and, um, and hopefully, you know, can, can lead the way for many, many others.
There are a lot of women around here in the athletics department that have goals to get into administration. Yeah. So what would be your, your biggest piece of advice for some of those women that want to get into a leadership type role with administration within athletics? You can't listen to the noise. I mean, I, I, I can remember a very distinct conversation, you know, pretty early in my career where somebody, I was telling them I want to be an AD, and they were like, Susan, you, you need to pick something in central office administration because there's just not any female ADs. And full circle moment, um, I was speaking to a group of superintendents, and um, he happened to be in the crowd, and he came over and he said, you proved me wrong. And I said, I, you know, you weren't going to define what I could and couldn't do. And you can't listen to the noise. You have to know what you're good at. You have to know what you need to improve at. And you, you've got to put yourself in a position for people to identify that you're good. And that there's a little self-promotion there, but it's sometimes just about your actions. And um, your, your actions need to match your words. Coach said that to us the other day. I, I highly believe in that. And I think, you know, I, what you see is what you get with me, too. And um, I think that's always held very true. People trust me and believe in me. And um, all those components add together. I, I could give a class on this right now. Um, that's what puts you in position to be successful and to get to, to positions that may, may not be typically held, um, you know, by females or whatever. Um, you just don't listen to the noise. You listen to what you know you're capable of and you just keep pushing. It's okay to be told no. There's a reason if you don't get a job, there is a reason that's happening. And um, you just got to stay at it and never give in. I feel like as a coach, you probably gave heck, heck of a halftime, quote unquote, <laughs> pep talks. I'd be ready to run through a brick wall listening to you. Oh, man, you made me feel good. I, I haven't, you know, I, I think I did okay on that, you know, because I, I just, you know, when you're, you're based in beliefs and, and that's, that's who I am and what I, you know, I walk the talk. That's why, I, you know, I keep referring back to Coach Rule because everything he preaches to us, to the players, I mean, it's what I believe in. It's what I was built on, you know. And um, I, you know, I do miss my halftime speeches, though, you know, <laughs> or my between innings, you know. Yeah, between innings. Yeah. I did. I mean, I love those things. And um, and and you, I got to do that a little bit at UIL, you know, because mm -hmm. you're just you're you're trying to motivate people. You know, I always want people to know how important their job is. You know, that was always my goal is to make sure I breathed life into what they were doing. Because, you know, coaches are stereotyped so much and they're, they're not always looked at here. They're looked at here, what they're not doing instead of what they're doing. And, um, you know, I, I'm passionate about that and anything I can ever do to, to raise others up, I, I want to do it. Well, you mentioned earlier you uh, know Joey McGuire, so you know Garrett McGuire, Coach oh, yeah. Wager. Can you give us some perspective on those guys? Man, then? they're my brothers. <laughs> I mean, they're my brothers. And, um, you know, Bob, I mean, he's a legend in the state of Texas. And uh, he's just, you know, him and I kind of had a little secret conversation before we came here because we didn't know about each other, but his name leaked out. And then my name kind of started leaking out, and then he called me. And I was all, dude, we're about to have some fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and of course, Joey um, with, with Garrett, you know, I, I know Joey better than I know Garrett. But, you know, as soon as Garrett and I figured out we were here together, I mean, it's been awesome. We got another Texas guy and Josh Martin. He's, he's on um, the special teams quality control. And um, his dad is actually the, um, the leader of that Texas High School Coaches Association. Now, I've known him since he was in seventh or eighth grade. I went to his wedding. I mean, wow. it's just, and it, so that feels good. Um, but, you know, what I want to make sure everybody hears is this whole staff is a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really are. They don't, you, you come in there and I, I always tell them, you know, sometimes I hear them say brotherhood and I go, and sisterhood, you know, because <laughs> we do have some females on this staff and, and they're great. I mean, we just get in there and pull up our sleeves and we go every single day. Everybody has a, has a goal. Everybody has a mission to make this program great. Everybody has, you know, this dedicated area that they're, that they're contributing to. And, man, it's fun. He's, you know, coaches put together a great staff. What goes into your role? What are your duties? What are what I'm are your figuring it out? What are your day to day goals? I guess <laughs> you know it's it, the chief of staff is really kind of an administrative role. You pull together, you know, you're trying you're pulling together all your staff. You're trying to pull all together anything administrative, you know, from us getting ready to in that Go Big Red project to move into our new facility to um, you know resolving some issues on the field. Coach wants to practice on the grass field. Is the grass field going to be ready to go by the spring? I mean, those kind of things. Um, I get to work with Trev and, and Doug Ewald and um, a lot of the uh, Marquita, um, a lot of the upper administration, you know, so that coach can, you know, be more dedicated to the on the field stuff. And um, it's, it's it, part of it, I'm still figuring out, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm having to meet a lot of people here, but 
uh, I start, I'm starting to feel some semblance of, you know, structure and process, you know, and, and coach is big on process. And, uh, you know, like I said, my main goal is for, for all of our coaches, especially our on-field coaches, they get to dedicate to that. And I'm the off the field coach trying to make sure that everybody's pulled together and working in the same direction. It's, you know, as you know, college football is a monster on the inside. And, and, and that part, I, you know, I think I'll just continue to get better at that every day. We were talking about this too, but I thought this was awesome what you were talking about, how the feel of Nebraska and yeah. how excited you were. I mean, you are a Texas lady, a Texas yeah. woman, yeah. but you felt at home here because of the buy-in from the fans and yep. being a, you know, Nebraska is basically the pro team here. So yeah. what's, why did you feel like it was such a fit? Yeah, so when I was talking to you earlier, you know, it's a big deal to be in a, in a one school town is what they call it. Cause there's a lot of multi-school districts. And, and I, I was, I served in both. I served in a role in a, in a one school town and a, in a multi-school district. And uh, there's just, for me, when, when coach was talking to me about this job, when coach rules talked to me about this job and I was wondering, you know, if his name was in it, even before him and I visited, I was like, what a cool thing to be able to go to where, you know, like you said, it's basically the pro team, the college team in the state. Um, and we have such division, you know, we got Texas a and we got Baylor, we got Texas Tech, I mean, University of Texas, you name it, you know, UTSA, some really, everybody divides. So when you go in Texas, everybody's got on a different shirt, right? The minute I crossed the, crossed the you know, Nebraska line, landed in the airport here in Lincoln, um, everybody had on the end. You might, you might laugh at this, you might not. But I remember I was like, are these people all coaches? Because, I mean, everybody, you know, that's what I'm used to is whenever they have on just the end, you know, uh -huh. that usually meant you're a coach. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, everybody's a fan. They had these little luggage tags that you could take for free. <laughs> oh, yeah. With the Huskers right there in the airport. And I was like, I picked the right place. Yeah. And uh, it, it – I've never, never, you know, I felt it on a smaller level. I was in the largest high school, like I said, in the state of Texas and 7,000 students, you know, but, uh, and everybody wore A, Al Allen High School is what it was. But when you, you're, you're talking about one high school, right? This is the entire state. And I know we feel very dedicated to, to making this program better, number one, for the athletes, um, and number two, for the University of Nebraska. But I, I don't even know if you can rank them. We feel a huge um, responsibility to make them better for our fans because our fans, you know, they've, they've hung through it all, you know, the good times and the bad times, and we're hoping we're about to show the way to some really good times. Yeah, shout out LNK. You can actually get bag tags that even take shots at Iowa, yeah. by the way. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, uh, LNK is a, a great sponsor of ours. Yeah. Well, and outside of, you know, your job, yep. you love to support other sports. You can't yep. wait to go watch some Nebraska softball. Oh, You've been wait. involved with Nebraska women's basketball. Yeah. You play golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've um, I haven't met. I want to meet every head coach here. I really do because I mean, I mean, look what I just came off of. I was leading every sport, and um, in the state of Texas, and I just you know I think that's part of our responsibility is to support the other sports. So obviously, Coach Rule. I mean, he's in more games than anybody. Um, he's giving me a hard time because I haven't been to some, but I'm trying, still trying to get settled. <laughs> That's an excuse, isn't it? I need to go do up downs. But um, softball, I mean, Coach, you know, Rhonda, I told you a minute ago, I'm not fangirl her because, I mean, I'm just, she's just such an incredible softball coach. She's, you know, she's one of those legends. She's one of those goats in the field. And um, I can't, I can't wait to, to get over there and, and meet her and her staff and, and go to softball games. I mean, obviously when you played it, it means something extra special to you. And um, I, it's all the sports here. I hope to get out and support as fast as I can. I just still try to get my feet underneath me and, and get you know fully ingrained in this job before I go try to take on too much. Well, we appreciate you taking some time to chat with us. Yeah. I know uh, a lot of Husker fans are interested to hear from you. We, we hear a lot about Texas high school football. You have a connection to that. So I know uh, people were excited to hear from you. Hopefully we can get you back on. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. I had a million other questions I could ask you. And <laughs> well, thank you have you. such great perspective. So thank you so much for, for taking some time. Yeah, go Big Red. Excited. Love it. All right, that is Dr. Susan Elza here on the Huskers Radio Network podcast. Make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode right here on the Huskers Radio Network.